we will be talking about similar figures. I'm going to take some polygons. So let's say we have polygon number uno over here. Let's label, except this one. And now, what I'm going to do is first of all, make those two sides congruent, and second of all, make everything integer values, which will be pretty hard to do. So, now, I'm going to make things interesting. All right. You know what? So this is close enough. Let's just say this is five. And that is also five. Now I'm just going to move this polygon over here to the corner. And now, what am I going to do next? Well, let's make another polygon in the same image. So, let's label everything over here besides the area. And now, what we're going to do is we're essentially going to take this side, make it four. Well, not really four, but we gotta size it up a bit more. That lot. Seriously pissed off with this. Oh, thank goodness. And now, I'm going to try and put this in the middle. 9.52. Okay, that should be just enough. And now I'm going to read the top over here. And you know what, this is 10, right? Let's just agree that this is 10 and this is 10 because I spent way too long getting these things so perfect and ah. So now, what do you see? Well, obviously, if we look at this, these two aren't congruent. One is definitely much smaller than the other. However, if you are pretty observant, let's put this over here. So if you are observant, let's take this, put it to the side. Why can't I? Okay, maybe I gotta do this. Yeah, that's... All right. So now, if you're pretty observant, you should notice something. You should notice that since we have 10 over here, 10 is obviously five times two, which might just be a coincidence. But why is the other side 10 as well? And what's even weirder, is that the last side, eight, is four times two. So, uh, okay, this is a bit hard to do, so I'm going to do it in reverse. Okay. So now, with our two triangles, we notice that well, one has five, five, and four, and the other has eight, ten, and ten. 
if you notice something, you should notice that the, there are corresponding sides. And that these sides have very special relations. So this side corresponds to this side, and 10 is 5 over 2, and this side corresponds to this side, and 10 is 5 over 2. Hmm. Now, the biggest thing of all is that these, we call these things, where shapes, shape sides are proportional. We call that similarity. And it's represented with the tilde sign. Fun fact, I actually didn't know what this was called for a long time. I thought it was the hyphen, but it's not the hyphen. So, shape sides are proportional, similarity. So now, that it did and not to con be confused with a shape congruency where shape sides are congruent or the same however one th a very notable thing that we will have to use later is that remember when you are dilating so essentially uh, similar shapes if these two are similar you can get one by dilating the other but remember dilation means only sides change angles don't So, if we measure the, these, it should be approximately the same. Now, it's definitely not going to be exactly the same because of my little mess ups with the sides, but it should be somewhat similar. So, 67 over here, 66 over here. And for one more example, 47 over here, and then. 47 over there. So, as you can see, these two have equal sides. So, that is very important. Now, what are the three strategies we can use for finding out congruency? Well, they're SAS, which mm, and basically stands for side angle side and what that means is you take any uh, a number of sides and the angles that come with it now if those two are proportional between the triangles then the triangles must be similar now side side just means you're getting some amount of the sides all but one of the sides and so if those sides are proportional to the other figure side, then it's also some AAA is angle, angle, angle. So they will give you all angles. I should probably explain SS, SS more in depth as well. All sides except one. So they give you all side lengths except one. Side angle side is all, wait, sum of the sides and included angles. And AAA, means all angles 
are uh, the same. Which means that since if all angles are the same, then you can scale one down and it'll be equal to the other. Alright, so those are the three strategies to find, uh, you know, similarity. And also, some important things to know, you should always find out if they're the same shape. So if they don't even remotely resemble each other, you know they're not, uh, you know, similar. And um, that's really all I can tell you. So now, let's get started with four examples. You don't know how long this took me to make and measure. So, in these four examples, we will use different strategies, and we will also label which strategies we are using. Now, I'm going to give you a quick few seconds to copy this, uh, these problems down so you can try them for yourself before, uh, you know, I <clears throat> do them. So, you should probably pause so that you can copy down the problems more effectively because you definitely won't be able to do it in the small amount of time I'm speaking and also scrolling through. But I will be done now. So those are our four problems. You can begin if you want to actually do those problems. But if you don't and you just want to see me do it, trust me, you should probably do them yourselves. Um, then, I mean, come and watch. So, first of all, we can use uh, her A, AAA, for this method, uh, for this problem, because we find that there uh, all three angles over here are the same. So, the co all corresponding angles are equal to each other meaning that they must be similar by the AAA rule. All angles are equivalent. Now, over here, it might look like these two are similar, since one is a pentagon and the other is just a sized up pentagon. But if you look closely, you will notice that this is actually just a, a, a vertical stretching, which we learned about in our transformation uh, video. And vertical stretching is not equal to dilation. So if you try and scale one down, then it won't be equal to the other. So, the vertical stretching is done by taking some of the sides and uh, enlarging them, but taking, uh, but keeping some of the other side the same. That's not what dilation does. Dilation scales all the sides by a certain factor. So, we know that these are not similar because as I said before, only some sides are upscaled. <coughs> Sorry, let's. Oh, uh, you should say that. Sorry. So now we have this miscellaneous shape, and we're trying to find these two are similar. So obviously, one looks to be a rotated image of the other, at least roughly. So we have the corresponding side, 4 root 5, 4, two, uh, root 2, 0 0.4, 3, 1.8, and root 2, 0, root 0 0.4. So, well, is how do we find if this is, uh, you know, co uh, uh, these two are similar? Well, we can use the maths. So, 4 root 5 divided by root 5 is going to be 4. So, if we divide one of these sides by root 5, will we get the corresponding side in the smaller figure? So, like, for example, root 2 over root 5 
is root 2 over 5, which is root 0 0.4. So, yes, that's 1. What about 3? Well, this could uh, this could fall under either SAS or S because we're using the because these, uh, this angle isn't changing, and we're also using all the sides besides one. So, if we take uh, three and divide it by root five, that gives us root nine over root five or root 9 over 5, which is root 1.8. Yes, I designed this to be intentionally tricky. So, uh, the same process repeats for this side, and we realize that these two are similar. And finally, for the last, we have these two, and at first glance, it would seem that they are similar, but for the same reason as last time, this is just rotation, and then uh, it could be horizontal squishing, I guess, because one of uh, because we are keeping so some only some of the sides have been downscaled. So this is not similar. So that's all I have for today. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time.